This video is a demonstration for making the t-shirt mask pattern found on MasksNow.org. This basic mask is for personal use only and not made to be given to healthcare centers. Please check MasksNow.org for the other masks available. This tutorial is geared towards people who may not have a lot of supplies and don't have much sewing experience. While there is some sewing involved, it will be basic stitches and done by hand. If you do have a sewing machine, you can use it for the sewing parts. These homemade face masks are not surgical masks or filtering face piece respirators. These face masks have not been tested for fluid resistance, particulate, or bacteria filtration efficiency, differential pressure, or flammability. These homemade face masks have not been evaluated by the FDA. These face masks have no certifications from any regulatory agency. For supplies, you'll need a t-shirt and thread. You'll notice that I have two different color t-shirts here. This is because it's going to be easier for me to differentiate between the front of the mask and the back of the mask. So it's preferred if you use two different colors. But if you only have one t-shirt, that's fine. You can use any t-shirt. It's just preferred that you use something that doesn't have a printed graphic on the front and is more on the plain side. For a thread, I'm just using all-purpose thread. But if you have one of those repair kits that has thread and a hand needle in it, that's also fine to use. For tools, you'll need a hand sewing needle. Again, you might be able to find one in a repair kit. Uh, straight pins if you have it. If you do not have straight pins and you're just using stuff around your house, you can also use a bobby pin, paper clip, or hair clip. You'll need to use a pair of scissors. Just be aware if you're using a pair of scissors that have cut a lot of paper and plastic, it may be hard to cut fabric with it because the blades might be dull. And then you'll need a pencil for marking our t-shirt. And if you don't have a printer and can't print out the pattern, you'll also need a ruler and some paper. If you have a printer, print out the pattern. If not, we'll give you the dimensions next so you can make your own pattern. There are two sizes. There's the medium large mass pattern piece that comes with a medium large template. And then there is the small extra small mask pattern that comes with the template as well. For this demonstration, I'm going to be working with a medium large piece, but it's going to be the same steps no matter the size. If you don't have a printer, you can draw your own pattern using paper, pencil, and a ruler. The medium large pattern is eight inches wide by seven and a quarter inches tall. On each eight inch side, put a mark at the halfway point, which is four inches. For the pleat template, draw a rectangle that's six inches wide and seven and a quarter inches tall. Measure from the top one and a half inches down and draw a dashed line. From the dashed line, measure one and a quarter inches down and draw a solid line across. From the solid line, measure three quarters of an inch and draw another dashed line. From this dashed line, measure one and a quarter inches for the next solid line then three quarters of an inch down for the next dash line. Lastly, one and a quarter inches down from this for another solid line. Here's the dimensions for the small extra small pattern. It's seven inches wide by six inches tall. On each seven inch side, put a mark at the halfway point, which is three and a half inches. For the pleat template, draw a square that's six inches wide and six inches tall. Measure from the top one and a half inches and draw a dashed line. From the dash line, measure one inch down and draw a solid line across. From the solid line, measure down a half inch and draw another dashed line. From the dash line, measure one inch for the next solid line. Then a half inch down for the next dash line. Lastly, one inch down from this for another solid line. This is the preferred layout in order to get two masks from one t-shirt. I'm using a men's medium. When I place my pattern, I'm not putting it directly on the edge. I'm moving a little ways away from the side seam here. I'm also giving myself room below about seven and a half inches in order to be able to create my ties. Use a pencil to draw an outline around the pattern. You can see my outline there. Also, I transferred my dots from the pattern as well, because we're gonna utilize that. If your fabric is a dark color that you can't see pencil, you can also use chalk. Cut on the outline. When I finish cutting this out, I'll end up with two rectangles because I have the front of the shirt and also the back of the shirt. In order to cut it as accurate as possible, keep your fabric flat on the table and the bottom of the scissors also flat on the table. 
you don't want to lift up as much as necessary only because we don't want to stretch the fabric as we're cutting it. So if you leave everything flat, it'll make it more accurate. Next, we need to cut our ties from the bottom of the shirt. Before I do that, let's cut off the bottom hem because we're not gonna use this part, we're just gonna to toss it. So I'm gonna cut from one end to the other end. When cutting off the hem, I'm cutting through both layers of the t-shirt and cutting right above this top row of stitches. After cutting off the hem, you can then cut your ties. From the bottom of the shirt, measure up one and a half inches. You can either use your ruler and mark with a pencil or just eyeball it. So you'll cut from one end of the shirt to the other end for both layers in order to create a one and a half inch width tie. Then repeat the process for another tie because we need two ties for each mask. Your ties are currently in a loop, but we want one long strip. So I'm gonna use my scissors and just cut one end. For one mask, these are all the pieces that you'll need. Two mask squares and then two ties. Because I want the inside of my mask to be a different color, I use my pattern to cut it from my other t-shirt. Obviously, if you're using one t-shirt for the whole thing, these would be the same color. The reason for the mask having a different color on the inside is that when you take off the mask and then put it back on, it makes it easy to know which side of the mask should go towards your face. Place one mask piece on top of the other mask piece, making sure all the edges match up. Take one of your tie pieces, lay it flat. Mine has a side seam still, so that side is facing up. Then I'm going to take my mask and lay it over, matching that center dot with the center of my tie. If you don't have a seam or anything to mark that, you can go ahead and fold your tie in half, mark it with a pencil so you know where the center is. So with this laid on top, you can see I have about half my tie sticking up past that because I'm just gonna take the top and fold it over so I'm sandwiching my mask in between the tie. So if you look at the side, you can see if it's even and the raw edges are matching up on each side because we want about an equal amount of tie on the front of the mask and also on the back of the mask. Once I have it lined up, use your straight pins or clips or paper clips, whatever you have, just to kind of hold everything in place. Here's what it looks like clipped. I repeated the process for the bottom. You don't have to worry about the rest of the ties. This will stay unfinished. Put thread on your hand needle. After bringing the thread through the needle, you're going to bring the ends together and tie a knot. And I do this by pinching it between my finger and thumb, wrapping it around my finger, using my thumb to roll it off, and then pull, and you end up with a knot. Next, we're gonna be doing a running stitch along our ties, attaching the ties to the mask. So I wanna make sure when I'm sewing this, I'm going through the top, through the mask, and through the tie on the back as well. I'm gonna start by going between the layers, just to start off with, so I hide my knot, and about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. You don't have to measure this, I'm just going to eyeball it. So with my first stitch, I'm gonna go down through the layers. And since this is double thread we're working with here just for extra strength, you wanna pull slowly and then come up. I'm just securing this end here. And then go down, again, pull slowly. And a little ways away from that, I'm going to come up. So again, this is called the running stitch, and then go down. And my stitches aren't very big, it's because then it'll be more secure. So come up, and then go down. Now, an easier way to do this is I can push down, but I don't push all the way down. Then I push my needle over and come up. And just to make sure I'm going through on the back side, I can check and you can see my needle right there. So that's a little bit easier than going all the way down. Go down, push over, come up. And you'll notice this will be a little bit faster than the other way. Down, push over. 
and I'll do this for the top and the bottom. When you get to the end of your stitch, flip it over to the back side, grab a little bit of your fabric, and your thread should create a loop. And you're just going to run your needle through that loop and gently pull it, and that creates a knot, and then you can just cut it off. Lay your mask so the ties are going out to the side, then grab the template that goes with your pattern. Since I did a medium large pattern, I need to grab the medium large template. Now this template is just acting as a guideline. So I'm gonna lay it onto my mask so I can see the fabric on both sides and the top of the template goes to the top of the mask. Then use a pencil and draw the lines on both sides so they match with the lines on the pleat. Now it doesn't have to be exact. I wouldn't stress out about this part. The important part is, is that we're getting three pleats and it fits within the confines of the mask. You'll notice my bottom line here actually goes into my ties, which might happen because I'm kind of eyeballing my ties as I'm cutting them out and then as I'm folding them. So there's not really a lot of precision going on here. But if you find that happens to you, just make your last line right here at the top of the tie or if you want to make it a little bit easier just bump this up so the last line goes to the top of the tie and then draw your marks if it goes up a little bit past the top of the mask that's fine so as long as you have something of these lines drawn onto your mask then we can move on to the next step of creating the pleats for creating your pleats if it makes it easier for you to visualize you can draw arrows on your fabric just like we have on our template so the line that's above the arrow is gonna get folded down to the line that's below the arrow. I'm gonna do the first pleat. I'm taking the line above the arrow, pinching it between my fingers, so my mark ends up between my fingers, and then folding it down to the line that's below the arrow. So the arrow disappears, and then I would clip on one side and the other side. If it's easier for you, you can do one side at a time. So I'm pinching the mark between my fingers, bringing this mark straight down to the line that's below the arrow, clipping it, and then doing the same thing over on this side and then clipping on this side. I would then repeat the same process with the next two pleats, taking the line above the arrow, folding down to the line below the arrow. So I'm always bringing my pleats down. So pinching the mark between my fingers for that third line and then bring down to the fourth line, clipping on each side, and then doing the same with the last one. So taking this line, pinching between my fingers and bringing down to the line that's right above my tie and clipping it. Once I've clipped all the pleats into place, it'll look something like this. Next, we're going to hand stitch each pleat into place so it'll stay without the clips. So I'm gonna be sewing right along the edge. Grab your needle and thread and put it on similar as we did before. So this is on with the knot at the end. We're going to tack all these folds together in order to hold our pleat. I'll come up from underneath. So this is just a single tacking stitch. Work slow again so you don't accidentally create any knots. I'm coming out and then I'm just going down. It's about a half inch in width and there's a single stitch. And if we look here, you can see it's coming out from the bottom because I'm going all the way through. I would do this just going over the same stitch about three times just to make it extra secure. So I came up and then I go down. pulling slowly so we don't create any knots. And then I'll do one more time and then create a knot on the back just as we did a knot before where you're grabbing a little bit of fabric, creating a loop and then bring your needle through the loop. Here's the mask with my tacks done on both sides. So now the pleats should hold even if I stretch this out, they're not gonna go anywhere. And I can easily just compact it if I need to. And this is what it looks like on the other side. 
The mask is complete at this point. We're gonna leave our ties unfinished because it's knit fabric and it doesn't really need to be finished and we'll save ourselves from stitching it. Before you put it on your face, you might wanna pull on the ties. Don't try to break them or anything like that, but it kind of stretches it out a little bit more. So when you put it on your face, you can fit it to you and then cut off any excess ties because it'll probably be a little bit long. Just to know the front of the mask from the back of the mask, I obviously have yellow on the front and then green on the back, but also on the front, my pleats are going down the face. And if I was to flip this over to the back, the pleats go up the face. So that's another way to tell the front and the back. But now the mask is complete and ready to be used.